Does the Kalahari Desert hide the ruins of a completely unknown advanced civilization? How did the people in Colombia, 12,600 years ago, manage to build works of art at dizzying heights that today can only be reached with drones? And what does it have to do with the eerie footprints in England that are suspected to be from the devil himself? Well, these are exactly the exciting and perplexing questions that archaeologists are inevitably confronted with and which we will now get to the bottom of together with you. While many magicians can only conjure a rabbit out of a hat, the great Farini had a far more spectacular trick up his sleeve. In 1885, the Canadian tightrope walker and entertainer, whose real name was William Leonard Hunt, pulled something out of his sleeve that is still the focus of heated debate today. In detail, Farini claimed to have tracked down the ruins of an ancient city on a journey through the Kalahari Desert, which had undoubtedly been built by a completely unknown advanced civilization. He described his supposed sensational find as a huge row of stones that looked like, quote, the Great Wall of China after a severe earthquake. However, if you now believe the millennia-old relics were immediately examined archaeologically, you're mistaken because until Farini's death in 1929, practically nobody was interested in the mysterious desert city. In the years that followed, however, a veritable expedition boom began, which ultimately failed to hit the mark. Although well over 20 research missions to the Kalahari have been undertaken by the 1960s, no one had succeeded in locating the stone remains. In view of this, it is perhaps possible that Farini's bold claims were nothing more than a brazen hoax, that the circus entertainer was simply playing a joke on the public in order to make the headlines. Well, not necessarily. After all, it is also conceivable that Farini was simply mistaken. The historian A.J. Clement became aware of this in the 1960s when he reconstructed Farini's route at the time. In the end, he may indeed have come across some strangely shaped rocks in the area of Rietenfoten in the South African Namibian border. But contrary to their unusual appearance, the so-called eggshell hills are in fact of purely natural origin. The Monster and the Quiet Place The year is 2019 when archaeologists in London uncovered a square pit that has undergone a somewhat different kind of transformation over time. While the 14th century pit was initially used as a receptacle for human excrement, it was later converted into a fancy cellar. However, the redesigners of the time did not want to completely abandon the toilet routes, the cellar still contained a latrine. The bottom line is that the researchers not only uncovered centuries-old excrement here, but also a whole series of priceless artifacts. These included a gold-plated ring, iron spur for riding horses, and a fork, not to mention a rear tile depicting a grotesque monster. In detail, we see a kind of mythical creature with a human head and a leaf-like tail, and the experts have no idea who or what this strange beast is supposed to represent. This strange grave remains a mystery to historians. Near the Bulgarian town of Pomeri, surrounded by vineyards and orchards, stands an imposing burial mound dating to between the 2nd and 4th centuries, and thus to the Thracian era. The heart of the city is a large circular chamber that rises 5.5 meters into the air, has a diameter of 11.6 meters, and is adorned by a massive central column. But puzzlingly, the construction of the complex differs significantly from all other known Thracian tombs in Bulgaria, because the complex is made of quarry stones and red bricks joined together with mortar. In this way, the architecture of the building is more reminiscent of that of Roman mausoleums. In view of this, its function as a classical Thracian tomb is sometimes seriously questioned. Some researchers are now of the opinion that we are dealing with a Haroon, that is, a tomb or sanctuary dedicated to a mythical hero. However, as the site was probably plundered by grave robbers a long time ago, and there are no other clues as to the creators or the intended purpose, the Pomeroy Burial Mound will probably remain a historical mystery forever. These rock paintings are 12,600 years old. The Serena di la Lindosa 
is both an important natural reserve in Colombia and a millennia-old picture gallery that gives us a breathtaking insight into life long ago. The estimated 12,600-year-old works of art not only depict abstract patterns, people, and well-known animals such as horses and camels, but also creatures that have long since disappeared from the earthly stage. In addition to Ice Age proboscideans, so-called Gampotheria, these also include giant sloths and representatives from the group of South American ungulates. The fact that the rock art is literally a long series of images is shown by the fact that the total length of the images is estimated to be an incredible 13 kilometers. The bottom line is that people probably made tens of thousands of paintings back then, and some of them are so high up, they can only be explored with the help of drones. The Mystery of the Oldest Petroglyphs in North America And while we're on the subject of millennia-old works of art, we can't forget to mention the petroglyphs at Pyramid Lake in the U.S. state of Nevada. Some experts estimate the age of the petroglyphs at 10,500 years, others even at 14,800 years. But either way, we are dealing with the oldest petroglyphs in North America. But who created them, and what are they supposed to represent anyway? Well, although the images were discovered on the territory of the indigenous Pyramid Lake Palut tribe, Experts do not know the definitive answers to these fundamental questions. What the experts do know, however, is the trail that apparently leads to Oregon. According to this, rock carvings also lie dormant by a lake here, which are strikingly similar to those in Nevada. However, it is debatable whether there is really a direct link between the two finds. After all, the petroglyphs in Oregon were probably not made until 2,500 years later. The Stench of the Past Someone must have forgotten to do the washing up when archaeologists uncovered a series of ancient barrel latrines in Odense, Denmark in 2014. They couldn't believe their noses. Even though the contents of the wooden artifacts were already 700 years old, they still exuded an intense smell. However, in the same breath, note the pun, the amazingly well-preserved excrement also held great potential for knowledge as it could tell the experts how the inhabitants of Denmark ate hundreds of years ago. The researchers also found small pieces of moss, leather, and fabric inside the containers, which were used as toilet paper at the time. Interesting to know, before the wooden barrels were put to their later use, they were still used to transport goods and store fish. Well, better this way than the other way around. The Man with the Knife Hand the man who lost his right hand in Italy 1,500 years ago was actually doomed to die. The serious injury could have sailed his fate, if not from the rapid loss of blood, then from the infection, for which there were no antibiotics at the time. But the man survived, and after his wound had healed, he replaced the severed body part with a long knife, which he attached to his arm with leather straps. Today, the unknown man with the bladed hand rests in a necropolis in northern Italy, surrounded by 200 other skeletons and the remains of a headless horse that was once offered as an animal sacrifice. Who created this site? In the 15th century, an Iron Age farming community in northern Tanzania decided to create a large interconnected group of villages, which from then on served as a home for several thousand people. The settlement community is known today as Angarika and it was home to an ingenious irrigation and cultivation system, which included a canal made of stone blocks that carried the cool water from the steep slope of the crater highlands to the artificially created cultivation terraces. The inhabitants of Nguruku also took measures to combat soil erosion and increase the fertility of their fields. But at the same time, they have left us with a number of nagging questions. So we don't know who the founders of the settlement were, how they developed their sophisticated agricultural system, and why they left Angorica by the 18th century at the latest. The Hidden Towers of Angkor Wat Located in the namesake region of Angkor in Cambodia, Angkor Wat is not only one of the largest, but also one of the most bewildering temple complexes in the world. 
Unfortunately, sometimes our human eye is not enough to uncover the hidden secrets of the past, and this is exactly where LiDAR comes into play. A few years ago, laser-based exploration technology was instrumental in uncovering eight previously unknown towers and the remains of a massive spiral-shaped structure at Angkor Wat. And indeed, this is a literally huge find. The spiral structure measures an incredible 1,500 by 600 meters. But since we know of no comparable counterpart anywhere in the world, the question of its original function still awaits an answer. The Footprints of the Devil In February 1855, the inhabitants of the English county of Devon fell into sheer panic. But who would keep calm when the devil has crept into their midst? After it had been snowing heavily for a few days, the snow cover was mysteriously adorned with countless imprints resembling cloven hooves. For the outraged crowd, the explanation for the mysterious tracks was immediately obvious. The footprints were made by none other than the devil. In fact, the strange indentations did not just appear in one place, but in 30 different places. But the path that the Prince of Hell had taken on his snowy walk also seemed extremely strange. The footprints not only led through gardens, but also over houses, walls, and a haystack. The rumors of a devil-like creature roaming the streets at night were the cause of great horror among the population. Some people even went armed through the countryside to put an end to the satanic going-ons. But despite this, the snow devil was never caught. But today we are certainly smarter. We certainly know some plausible weather phenomenon that was responsible for the strange imprints, don't we? Well, not really, because the truth is that we still have no idea what the true background of the incident was. Apart from the devil theory, however, a modern attempt at an explanation states that we are dealing here with the work of wood mice or jumping mice. These could have hopped through the farmsteads and settlements in search of food, and thus given their human contemporaries a cold shiver. And speaking of shivers, if you are a regular viewer of our videos, you should definitely click on the subscribe button now. Join our community now and never miss another exciting post from us again.